still alive. All right. So uh, this is the Guild Ball. That's dead. This is the episode uh, where David just goes over dead games. Dead games. Uh, dead hey, games. Everybody. The episode. Hello. Dead games. The episode. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> and uh, and uh, oh god. Uh, 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 Whoop, and everyone's audio was on. My audio. Was Professionals on. at all times. It's the Rambles. Good morning, it's everyone. Professionally bad. Yes. That's that's our brand. Um, I think the camera's even a little tilted, actually, but it's too late now. That's it. This whole thing is Dutch angles. Welcome to the right. Thor episode of Rambles. We just lean one way. We can offset it. Yes. The other way. The Thor, the Thor episode? Yeah. Remember the first Thor movie? Ah, so Everything was Dutch angle for no reason. So we're back talking about Thor again. It's back to we, Thor! We took a week off. They wow. can't, you can't not talk about Thor on this, on this show. We're obsessed. I, I really do like Thor. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's cool. He's a cool guy. He's got the lightning and the hammer. So hello. So hello. So hello. How are you? I am good. I meant to good. shave this morning and I didn't, so... It's good. Don't don't reveal that yet. That's our secret. Yeah, that's we got a big surprise coming up on the show later. That's buried behind all these awesome stuff that we're going to talk about. Is it a surprise um, when I've already posted about it repeatedly? Shh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's a surprise to our viewers on this show, uh, all two of you. So, <laughs> wait, wait, it's a surprise to us. So that's great. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's the Rambles. It's October twenty first. I'm going to start saying dates now so that when I'm reviewing them, I know which one is which episode. Ten days to uh, spooky season. Ten days to spooky season, which means the next episode is going to be our spookiest one yet, I think. I think we might we might be in costumes. What what Halloween costume should we wear for the next show in the comments? Uh, and they must be semi-work appropriate. Ooh. Uh, semi. Like, waist up work appropriate. We don't we never wear anything waist down anymore. Waist down to party. So it's, it's all the time. Yeah. I call it, waist down, I call it catachin mode, because it's just going command. <laughs> oh, oh, that's yeah. sly. Marble. Oh, 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 oh this is going to be a terrible one. So, yeah, you keep wanting to touch that. <laughs> You've done that for good. So, what's going on this week? Well, um, I I don't know. I'm trying to be the straight man, because we have no uh, producer today. Oh, yeah, we don't have the producer. To, oh, I can't even do the cut to the producer joke, because I didn't have it queued up. Um, let's let's see if our producer is feeling any better. I know they were taking a break. Uh, no, they look like they're they're still having a hard time. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we have got some new products, some old, not old products, but some stuff that's come in that people might not have recognized uh, on the Gigabyte side and the Bridge side. Some cool stuff. Yeah. So I figured we'd talk about the Gigabyte stuff first, kind of move into the Bridge thing. And we can get, get out of the way because nobody cares about Gigabyte. Yeah, who, who, who are you guys watching this? Exactly. That's only nobody cares about Gigabyte, which was recognized as one of the top 200 stores worldwide by Asmodee. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I jumped a gun. Oh, so, so sorry. Yeah. How many are above us and how many do we have to take out? Is that like a list? I mean, I, I like to tell people we're the top one store. You know, That's true. So, you know, more to do. Top one store. Yeah. But yeah, so we were, we, we were, we, we got a limited edition Grogu model this week that came out with Ginger in. I don't know what I'm talking about because it sold out, like the pre-order sold out within minutes. <laughs> it sold out in the comments <laughs> in section. In minutes. Uh, and it was only available for the top 200 stores, which a lot of people didn't know because I got messages from other retailers like, what? Well, I'm like, yeah, top 200 stores worldwide are allowed to buy this. Yeah. Uh, so we were one of the top 200, which is very nice. I think that's true. And that's what we were told. Well, I know that's what's on like spiky bits and stuff. Yeah, it was a limited release. I know that. So, uh, well, I would say that like here you can get it at Giga, but you can't. But you could have. You could have. Had you been online at that exact time when I posted on my <laughs> Facebook page, and had were cons I now in my defense, I did go. All right, everybody, log on to the site and start refreshing. <laughs> Yeah. Fresh, 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 fresh. And, I wonder, and then I changed the number and updated it. I wonder if those limited things, that they come out like a little later sometimes. Like I know GW sometimes does that. They'll like, then six months later, that model will be released kind of to the public. I don't think so because they are, the Ginger Inn model already has two Grogu models. Oh, that's right. I forgot. And so that, there's yeah. two Grogu. Oh, so this is like an alternate because it's the one with the mouth, right? No, the frog and mouth is the, is the one in the box. And then oh. there's like a separate one. Uh... Because I think it's Frog and Mouth, and then, like, in Baby Carriage. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the other one is. I think is it's the, oh, it's, the, it's the, the flamethrower, when he's blocking the flamethrowers. I think that's I it. think that's the point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there you Very go. Very cool. Yeah. That's the Baby Yoda talk. So uh, I have a friend that just now, uh, sorry, Kurt, I'm going to call you out, just now realized that that's not actually Baby Yoda, because he's never watched any of the shows. And <laughs> he found out in the group chat today that that's not actually Baby Yoda. That's Grogu. Yeah. But, I mean, if you never knew that, everyone calls it Baby Yoda. Because Grogu is... I think even, like, the people who make the toys and stuff call it Baby Yoda now. How could you not? Yeah. Like, that's, that's what it is. Sorry, everyone. Is. Uh, we're, we'll, you can rename something else. Rename Porgs. Yep. Those never took off. I love Porgs. That's okay. a Porg mug. They took off, sort of. For me, they took, <laughs> they took off. off. When I was walking through Galaxy's Edge, there was a lot of Porg stuff and a lot of Crystal Fox stuff. You know stuff. why the Porgs exist, right? Uh, to cover those birds that wouldn't leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they fill them with Skellig Mitchell, which is an island off, off Ireland, and it's covered in puffins. 
and they couldn't actually get rid of the puffins, so they just made them porks. No, oh, so the scene where uh, Chewie's cooking one is actually a real puffin. Yeah, they probably yeah. just catch a puffin. And Peter Mayhew just... wouldn't kill I, it himself. I don't, know if you're I, don't, I don't know if you're allowed to kill a puffin. I'm not sure if they're endangered <laughs> or protected. But anyway, that's your, your stupid fact today that I think everybody knows. I think you'd feel bad morally if you killed a puffin, because they're adorable. <laughs> Like, you just feel bad. Just feel bad. You know what else you'd feel really bad killing morally that's a, a, an aquatic creature? This is a hard segue to go into. Wow. But you mentioned Ireland. <laughs> potato pirates. <laughs> you mentioned Ireland. You're going to get to potatoes. We've got, we have them. So this is, uh, this is stuff that's, I believe, at Giga. Not yet. Not it yet. Will it will be. It is for distribution of bridge. Yes. So bridge people, you can pay attention uh, right now to bridge. the awesome stuff we're talking about here. I, uh, I've actually heard of this before. A long time ago. Potatoes? Morning. Yeah, yeah it's quite surprising. Positive. Yeah, um, quite positive. There's, a, there's a whole thing about some bow weevils or something. It's like the Irishman's dilemma, yeah. right? It's like, do I eat the potato now or do I wait for a while and then drink it later? That's true. Yeah. What's yeah. the right answer? It's a good joke. Oh. Uh, get two potatoes and do both. Dang it! That's smart. <laughs> oh, well, you can get a bunch of potatoes in these potato pirates boxes. So what's cool about them uh, is that uh, these are actually full, so I'm not going to shake it very much because they're full of stuff. Uh, they're actually educational games, but in a really sly way that you can get kids to actually learn stuff from. Yeah. Uh, Mario teaches typing style because it's fun to play the games and it's teaching people. This one is about uh, code logic. It actually teaches like if then logic, boolean stuff like that. Uh, and the other ones teach like cybersecurity lessons in terms of like how packet so, hacking works. So we, so we had Cluster and people were like, hey, do you have any more STEM games for my kids? And we're like, yeah, we do. Cybersecurity. Yes, yeah, so we're going to teach your kids how to hack and how magnets work. Pretty sure you're going <laughs> to. Boat involving computers. Boat involving computers, <laughs> yeah. I mean, computers are just rocks we hit with electricity and taught them to think. So, like. It's true. And then magnets make them not think anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they Or they make Bender turn back into his original programming. Oh, geez. Ah, yes. That's, that's old. So Futurama was an old cartoon for those of you at home that don't know that. Um, it's kind of like classic rock, like, you know, Blink-182 and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gosh. decayed a little bit. I saw an ad for, uh, speaking of this, I saw an ad that was, I think it was, what was it? It was Disenchantment, I think. Oh, I'm looking forward to that movie. And it was like, it was like, the, from the creator of, um, what was it? I can't remember his thing that wasn't The Simpsons. It was the Bunny comic. Do you remember? It was like from hell or something. Anyway, Barney, come, uh, Matt Groening's like weird old stuff, and they were, they just completely ignored the Simpsons. They were like from the <laughs> creators of these comic strips in the '80s, and it's like or the Simpsons, yeah, the one that everyone Simpsons. would know and cares about. But anyway, yeah. yeah, so you got one for so, cybersecurity, you got one for coding, which I'm gonna I'm gonna pull you back on track. It's pull you back happen. on track. Sorry. Uh, and then you got one in the front. I don't know what that's about. Uh, no, that's, coding as well. I guess. Yeah. So the, so cool. basically, uh, you have your kind of beginner level coding and stuff like that, and it's done in a very game mechanic way. So you don't really think about it like that. Mm -hmm. um, but they also have materials in these boxes that explain like, here's what you're doing, and here's what this actually means in terms of code. So if you have uh, players that are a little older that want to like learn what they're doing, you can log onto the websites with those codes and actually like sort of start coding with the game. It kind of has a little pl program to walk you through. You got to keep the themes together. It's like potatoes, pirates, coding. All that goes together. Yeah, so the three... Th yeah. When I, I can't... If I think about potato pirates, I'm immediately thinking cybersecurity. Yeah. You know, I no one else isn't. Why wouldn't uh, I mean, who wouldn't you? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I don't know, but these games have a lot of potato toys in them, so um, that's pretty cool. That's... that's like and like potato they have plushies. So we have the great white shark, <laughs> potato... Uh, this is the Potato King, uh, the the yeah, Lord potato. potato of the High Seas. Yeah, the Potato Pirates. A type, none of them can stand up because they're way too drunk on themselves. Uh, and then we have the the fan favorite, the Baby Kraken, which is not a potato. What? It's not a potato. It's kind of potato shaped. Yeah. Well, everything's kind of potato shaped if you have ever it's seen a potato. The Great White Spud, by the way. Oh, the Great White Spud. Great so, White Spud. So uh, we also, if you're if you're looking at this from the retailer side. And you're thinking about ways to get into uh, a younger market with like educational stim based Yeah, he's not. He's not going to do that. He's a key ring. <clears throat> with the stim based games and stuff like that. These are really great uh, ideas and they're really great gifts too because as you have the descent into comic and game stores of the well meaning parents and grandparents, they don't really understand any of this, but they just want to do something nice for their kids. This is a good thing to do if they have younger yeah, audiences. Help them learn games. Yeah. Uh, and you've got some plushies. Blizzy's Blizz Blizz asking which game does coding. Uh, so there's two, right? Yes. So there's Potato Pirates, a card game of Potato War. And this one, yeah, this the Potato Pirates is, this is really and, uh, basic Boolean logic and coding, like if then, uh, and then AB stuff. Battle Chips, a spectacular, <laughs> spectacular, spectacular coding card game. Yeah. 
This Battle Chips is a little more... Watch out, it will dump all over Strategic Sam computer science card game that transposes common computing concepts into a tabletop game. Chips represent blocks of code to be run. There we go. Sorry, that took a while. So if you want to think about it in terms of like a expertise level, this is a very intro. You could play this. What's upside down? You can play this with younger audiences. Uh, I just and... love that they call it the Carbo B and C. Carbo B. Carbo B. I can't even say it. Carbo B and C. Carb. Carb. Yeah. Carbo like carbs. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> simple. simple <laughs> and that coding. shut down the stream for a second as we all went silent. Well, we had to read how cool these are. So simple coding ideas, that kind of stuff. More complex, but also has like a multiplayer variants and things like mm -hmm. that. And it's a it's more about the concept of the game uh and like i said if you get these games check out inside the, they'll tell you how to go to the website and do all the little videos that kind of show you how you're doing this and you can build code on the website it's really cool it's neat stuff and it's educational for kids and now tell your kids to go away because we're into the the grown-up stuff yeah we got grown -up spooky things. things and there's stuff in front of the gargants you just can't really see it cause ah, yeah well it's fun the gargants, I put right? that. yeah yeah so we have got some spooky games spooky, spooky season because of spooky seasons uh and i know that i grabbed that one because i knew that that was going to be our favorite even I though it's been out for a couple some, weeks some evil dead too well it's been out for a couple years a year or two we didn't get back in the bridge or gigabytes oh well we got it back in so that's why we're cool. look at that look at that guy necro no 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 uh, necro no 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 again yes yeah, Evil Dead 2. So this was uh, Jasco did the Kickstarter on this, and then I think Warlord Games had the final stock. So we bought a big stock of gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a cool thing for Halloween, that's groovy, baby. Can't get, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, can't get much better than Evil Dead 2. That's true. Because remember, if you're gonna shop smart, shop Gigamart. <laughs> shop. This is Gart. Shop Gart. G Mart. Shop. Sh no. Mart. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Yeah, super cool. Fun game. It's got miniatures that look exactly like it, like Ash. Yeah, the uh, the, the, the tree granny, miniature is the one that I wanted. The tree mini. Uh, I don't know who that's meant to be in the game. He's got really tight pants. Can I say that I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't have little mini Ash? Oh, it's the way here. It's got an evil Ash, evil Linda. Oh, so it's got Ash, combat ready Ash, Linda, Annie, Ed, Jake, and Papa Joe. Oh, okay. And then it's got an evil version of each. In case they get real ugly. Oh, and it's got fast. a Henrietta, and it's got the hand, and it's got a killer tree. It's everything you need. And it's got head miniatures, so if you want Linda to talk to you after you... <laughs> you can just carry her around. <laughs> Perfect. So that's a, that's a really cool thing. Uh, and if I you like, were... I like that the Necronomicon is the cover. I do like that. I feel like they... I wish they had a special edition where it was actually like... I think this is the special leather. edition. Oh, like a like oh, super sorry, duper yeah. special. Oh, sorry. Like, gotcha, it's like gotcha. actually like We're actually found found in human flesh. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm... inked in human blood. <laughs> oh I really God. want that edition. What's the MSRP <laughs> on the human flesh conversion? <laughs> like, so we always talk about like producing games as the wood cost goes higher and paper gets higher. When does human flesh equal out? Then? You have to have someone with really bad dermatitis, so you can just have a constant. Yeah, that's getting a bit. I think this I'm is turning sorry. into 40k that's lower at this point. Where we're just making parchment out of Blah. people. That's a whole planet for that problem. Anyway, anyway, so if you're looking to run away from the people trying to make you into a, a parchment parchment corpse, we have Final Girl. It's in stock at Giga, and I had to fight to take some over here because people were like literally trying to oh, take I bet it you off did. the shelf while I was so, like grabbing it. Yeah, we backed, we backed. I mean, first off, Van Ryder Final Girl is amazing. It sold out almost immediately in the first release. Yes. We backed the Series 2 Kickstarter. Uh, that has not shipped yet. It was supposed to ship in December, but I think this was supposed to ship in June, so I'm going to imagine December is not going to happen for Series 2. Uh, but we did get the Series 1 stuff all back in. Yes, and this is only a couple of things. I, I actually didn't want to grab too much because people were trying to purchase it, so I didn't want to take it away from them so they have to watch it on TV before they can buy it. That <laughs> felt silly. Uh, so I only grabbed a couple of things, but they have the full selection yeah. there. Uh, so, can, there we go. So, so if you were not a Final Girl aficionado, <laughs> but I don't know why if you, then you're not a horror movie fan because that's pretty much one of the main tropes is being the final girl in a horror movie. Right. And in this game, you do play as the final girl in a horror movie. So the way the game works is you have the core set, which is... I can't get it out. But anyway, the core box, yeah. which is basically, I like to call it the VCR player, right? Yeah. So this is the core thing you need to play the game, but you can't play the game with just the core set. You got to have a feature film right. to put into your VCR. So you got to have a core game and then one of these feature films. So we have a bunch of star sets that's like randomized. Uh, I think we made four of each. We can make more, but of each series one. And when series two comes, we'll make star sets of the core and those ones. But you can buy this and you can buy extra ones. They're all 20 bucks each, which mm -hmm. is pretty nice. Like it's a great price point. Yeah. Uh, and some of them are actually like the actual horror property because I think that's the Poltergeist one, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can't trademark yeah. Poltergeist, right? Right. It's, it's based on Poltergeist. It's this obviously... is based on 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre is what I want to say. It looks oh, like. Frightmare. That's, that's obviously Freddy. Slaughter the Groves is based on, uh, I think, an African deity. Uh, then the first wanders. Uh, Happy Trails Horror, which is a pig man. Yeah. Mass murder. And then <clears throat> Haunted Creature Mars, the Poltergeist. And Carnage at Carnival is like scary clowns. Yeah. But then the second, the remake, the series two, it's like, it's all like sci fi movie tropes. So there's an alien one. Oh. There's a thing one. Yeah, like Terror at Station 2891 has a thing. Uh, Full Moon is Werewolves. I don't know what Madness in the Dark is, though. Probably. Anyway, could Intruders be is like, you know, like the intruder horror style, like the Strangers and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, like Strangers know? are. It's like the Purge, kind of. Would count. But the Purge kind of, kind of an intruder horror movie. Well, I guess they're trying to intrude. That's why yeah. they lock down their houses. Yeah, but they, you're voting for the people on the outside sometimes. So, I don't know. Oh, right, so season one, clearly season one is out now. Like, we got a restock of season one. So this is all season one. Season two is supposed to come in December, but I, I, if I was a man who was in the logistics industry, <laughs> which I hope you are, I would suggest it's probably going to arrive in like February. Yeah, March, maybe. But there's plenty to play until but then. It's amazing. I mean, it's an absolutely incredible thing. I ordered 40 of each item. Um, and I mean, it's been selling like great. I've been watching Gigabyte sales go. It has. And what's really cool, I didn't realize this, but uh, one of the people over there was nice enough to show me the way the game works. I didn't realize you actually, I, I'm not going to open one to show, but you take off, it's magnetically like locked on. So you take it off, and there's your game map. So when you have that dual set, you can combine any of the characters with any of the horror. Oh yeah, yeah, and they have like the nets. Like they have Terror from Above, and they have another one called Terror from the Grave, which is in series two. Like they're ten dollar fees, and you can buy miniatures. There's a miniature set. Mm -hmm. There's a game map set. There's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, you could also buy a copy of uh, what's the other one? Don't look back and use the miniatures for it, as we discovered. You can, except we're sold out. Oh well, never mind. That was a bad thing to mention. No, you can't don't buy look back. My is, copy of don't look back, back is amazing. Uh, I think we have to get more of it in stock at Bridge, and then we'll have more in stock at Gigawatts because I'm sold out in both places. Oh well, sorry then. Another sorry about incredible that. Incredible game. I sorry, think everyone. Follows the same idea, right? If you're being hunted, yeah, attacked by a killer in the woods. Yeah, it's a little Freddy Jason. From what I've seen, this is, that one is a little more like you have an open map and you can move wherever you want. And mm -hmm. These are a little more you have certain areas you move. But there's, it's the same theme, and the production value and stuff is really cool. Like, it's yeah. just... And this is cool-looking games to have, and they're quick and easy to play. Um, uh, when I was talking, I was watching people set up the demo, and they said, once you know how to set it up, setup is basically 10 minutes, and the yeah. game is under an hour, for the most part. I love it. I mean, Van Ryder does great stuff. I mean, yeah. They, it's, it's almost... The pocket Detective, uh, Keepers... All of the all books. Of stuff. Yeah, in the fact, books. you can find all of them on bridges.com because oh, we, have, we have a lot of Van Ryder <laughs> stuff up there. We do have a lot of Van uh, I should have grabbed a bunch of the books. I didn't think about it. Sorry, let me down. There's too much let stuff on the table already, and we gotta get we gotta keep going because we gotta get to our going. special presentation. Special. All right, do you want to talk? And then I gotta ramble because I got things. Then we, then we I got, got things to complain about too. Salt for you. <laughs> so much salt and tea. Ugh. All right, uh, I'll let you, you talk about this. We can, we can get the potatoes out of the way. Do you want to talk about you, these guys? Talk about these are my boys. Here. All right, everybody, boys. it's it's the Warhammer time. Uh, let's go to the office. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? You could use this. Well, actually, no, you couldn't use this in 40k. Never mind. It's got mortal dudes in there. So I brought a couple of things. Obviously. The Zinch, can you? I mean, there's 40k cultists. Oh, no. 40k cultists. Yeah, that works. Yes. Well, Zinch players, you can add these to your Thousand Suns army, I assume. I don't really know how that works. But Age of Sigmar, which is what it says in the box players, uh, we've got the, the Zinch stuff in. So I, I remember somebody was asking about it on one of the channels on the Discord that we had the Vanguard set. They do. There's multiple copies, and there's one right here. So yeah. if you we are were... that person, comment, and I will hold this for you specifically. It is landed. We were late on our delivery. We did. These released last weekend. Yeah, uh, and um, we didn't get shipped. And we are. Uh, I don't know. They might be there right now, but the Gargant book has not been in yet. Because and that's that is not Giga or anybody's fault. There was apparently a big uh, somebody's a fault. hoopsie do. Yeah, somebody. Somebody's fault. Not ours. There was a hoopsie do. Something happened, and the book. Uh, in, basically, I think so, like two thousand stores got shipped to run product. Yeah. So like we received a product for four hundred game stores. <laughs> the problem some, is, is they're some not lucky, big, it's us. Some lucky, yeah. So, so like the, not much those Florida game stores was like half of the gigabyte store. Yeah. Like, oh, that sucks. Do but, you think our stuff went to a game store that usually gets like two or three things? Yeah. They just woke up and went, oh, no. We were one of the top 200 stores in the, in the world. Called the Asmodee. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand that to Games Workshop too. Because I spent too much money at Games Workshop. We're one of the top 200 stores in Georgia for Games Workshop. I guarantee you. There's <laughs> no way we're not. <laughs> yeah. It's like eight. So we got to be there. Um, but so the book isn't in yet, but while you're there, it's going to take you a while to build your King Broad and magnetize all the five different things that are in this box. Magneto magnetize and psh, just want or, to buy like four of them. Or, just, or do what <laughs> I do. Just it, end up buying five different Gargant boxes. Well, I, almost did. I, I hate magnetizing. Me too, and I'd rather just have the, them done. Yeah. Um, I'm not wise with my money, and well, that's why I do Magnetizing that. is cool, though. It is cool. It's yeah. cool. 
I don't know about these. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I've got a friend who can do amazing things with them, like magnetizing them perfectly. I never can do it. I, I always do that. Yeah, I don't. I or don't their arms just fall off in the middle of the fight. I just want to build it, glue it together, and if I want another one, I'll build it and glue it together. Yeah. So, I don't really play games anymore, so. Yeah. So the King Broad, he's there. Uh, we got Broads. So if you need, broads. you need to come pick up broads some Broads. We got Broads! Come pick up these Broads yeah. from us. Um, but it, And I want to say, I, you know, I'm going to give the, a little clap shout out to Games Workshop. Because they added, now everybody knows the Games Workshop is going to be impressed with this. They added onto a kit that was already two hundred dollars the ability to build two more people's worth of stuff, and it only went up ten bucks. That's pretty good. We were all counting on this one being like a two hundred fifty dollars box at this point. Yeah. So like, neat, neat for us Gargan players. Neat burrito. Neat burrito. So, giants are getting out of the way. Oh, oh, hey, it's getting out of the way. See, and the it, Zinch thing. Uh, the Zinch thing is the show. <laughs> the, the Zinch stuff is here. Um, and the book is as well. Everything it basically except for the Gargan book. Uh, they do. If you're man crushers and you're looking for some crushings on some mans, you got they some, have. If you're a man crusher, you want some broads. And you want some broads. You got broads and man crushers. Um, but they do have the gargants and the single packs over there as well as a couple of the double packs too. So nice. it's not the new red boxes, but it's the same kit. So you can go ahead and start building your gargant army if you want yep. to. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to play large figures in another game for miniatures, but you play a weird army where you're only playing with three guys, the Sentinels are out too. Oh, is that why you have this here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it, it's that kind of an works. analogy to it. It's kind of it's like knights in uh, 40k. You just be giving four guys and set them down, and that's the whole army. Are these new? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if this one is. There's a one pack and a two pack, <laughs> and I don't know which one is new. I don't know. I was like, why is this here? Because there's... We stock my every night at Gigabytes. Yeah, the entire range. There's one in two packs of the Sentinels. I don't know which one is the newer box, but I just grabbed the two pack. If that's the old one, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, Fight it with the X-Men. Remember have them all. You can play the X-Men music in your head while you're painting. <laughs> uh, on the bridge front. On the bridge front. Uh, is this the front of the bridge. Uh, uh, there we go. I'm going to put it up here. It'll be in camera. There we go. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. Yeah. Shovel Knight. Pretty cool. I just hide that again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Shovel Knight is from our good friends Pandacle Games. Uh Jonathan Bradford's designer. Uh he's local Atlanta. Uh they just launched a Kickstarter like oh no, they're launching a Kickstarter in the next few days. Yes. For expansion for Barnacle, called the Barnacle Bakes first expansion, uh the Chucks the Revenge. Uh incredible game, incredible company. Uh for Kickstarter. We're delighted to work for them. We'll have this probably should have this available for distribution soon. Uh, I just got to, to go ahead for him, but so we'll have mm -hmm. him back in stock at Gigabytes and an order for Bridge. But uh, I mean, this is a monster. I mean, just keep hiding this. Look how, look how big this is. You, it's like yeah. eight inches wide box. It's, it's uh, like, it's chunky. It's, it I chunky. actually kicked it while walking around, and it didn't move, and I almost fell. <laughs> it's a heavy box, and I can I can no kick worries, stars or carriers this, across the room here. This is the demo copy. Please don't kick stars or carriers across the room. No, I mean like that's that's like, I can that box hasn't uh, injured me. Could this one has injured me. <laughs> That's so a yeah, quality game. really super cool. Uh, I mean, I love the production. If you're a gamer that knows Shovel Knight, I don't play Shovel Knight honestly. Uh, oh, so I've played not... both and this. Oh, well, there you go. So I can tell you, uh, it has that kind of eight bit feel to it. What's neat about this game? Because you keep it at the board, right? Yeah, you you basically randomize the tiles, and then as you go, you're sort of moving them to the side. The ones behind are falling off, and you're adding in new ones until you get to the boss fight. It, it does capture that kind of sense of going That's through an eight bit cool. level like that. Uh, the combat's really fun. It's simple. If anything, we were basically playing and having a good time, and then we forgot to do half of our cool special attacks because, like, seems it like was so much fun time, to just do like the basic every time stuff. I've ever played the game is like forgetting rules. Yeah, uh, any game. And there's there's a lot of fun <laughs> rules in this that like uh, we obviously forgot. You don't have to have them to play, but it was fun to play anyway. And I like that in a game where you can forget your special abilities and you don't get destroyed by the end boss. And it has all the characters from the game in it as well, um, including Shovel Knight, Red Palette Swap, Shovel Knight, Yellow, and Green Palette Swap. Nice. Is, are they actually different characters, or just you? I think that's color? just be picked. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, they might be different characters cool. now, a la Mario Luigi. But I think right now they're just <laughs> castle crashes with shovels, is what I call them. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's, so, that's super exciting. And if yeah, yeah, on the distro side, look out. You'll get an email, obviously, when it's ready to go. Yeah, with a link. I do there. see uh, real quick with the relics of Reja. Yes, over there. Uh, I just want to quickly we. I was just told that my, my retail copies, the retail copies for the Kickstarter for this are shipping. We just want to get that in because I saw it and therefore I'm a squirrel and cannot. Uh, so retailers, your, your relics are Raja Havara. Ah, yeah. Ra Raja, it's Raja Havara. Raja Vahara. Yeah. yeah, Raja Vahara. I can pronounce it. It's coming. This is, it, it literally has been put in my car right now. So my retailer copies for Gigabytes will be there today. So this is a great game for a friend crazy like Box Joe Stack. Uh, mm -hmm. He did a new Kickstarter with this and Montolo's Revenge. Yeah. Uh, super cool solo game. Because we're all about solo games. Solo games are amazing. Do you see what I'm needing with this? Mm -hmm. uh, I see so where you're going. Retailers who back this Kickstarter, 
it's available shipping to you right now uh and also will be in distribution so yeah be next week and gigabytes people, people... Up. And oh, gigabytes people yeah. it will be there today <laughs> he's like oh yes yes it will be on the site <laughs> we already put it on the site oh yeah, it's I already i was way too early it's already on... so all i have to do is hit the button and it goes back up yeah but either way oh. so now the fulfillment of the kickstarter is fulfilled uh, it will be available for distribution, and retailers will have their copies that are already shipped out the door on the way to you. But the reason solo games are so cool, segue, segue, this arrived. Yay! See that? See that? That was great. Segue. Thank you. 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 Uh, Can we talk about it, or should we just? Show no, I just want to. That's it. That's, 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 the, the, that's the show. Mechanical Beast is in the house. This is, is our newest uh, Gigamech Games game. Game. Game game. <laughs> the game. Game. I'm super games. excited about this. So I I signed this game. I was actually looking at it this morning, like mid twenty twenty one. This predates me. Yeah. By a full year. Yeah. Like when I came in, this was already on yeah. site and on the on everything. So this has been in the works for a while. It is our large no, sorry, it's a lie. It's not our largest print run anymore since we did Grove. Uh up till Grove arrived last <laughs> Does month. Does that count because Grove is like that big? So. Yeah, but Grove we ordered like Eight and a half thousand, nine thousand copies. This mm -hmm. is the largest we ordered. Seven, six thousand nine hundred. Why we ordered six thousand nine hundred copies? I don't know. I'm sure nice. something to do with case quantities. Yeah, know, it, it was just... really nice qu case quantity. Yeah, that's, you know? that's it. I but guess. we have six thousand nine hundred copies. That's how much I believe in this game because normally my print runs are like two to three thousands. This was almost seven thousand. Cooperative, competitive. Yes. Solo. Like I mean, this game has it all. It can be all absolutely amazing. What I wasn't fully aware of was the the quality of this like. Um, so basically, to kind oh, of it's, a it's a tile laying game, right? Yes. So you're exploring a game. I like to think of it like um, House on Haunted House on the Haunted Hill, Portrayal, Portrayal, Portrayal on Haunted Hill. Hill. Yeah. Like where you're like you're going in as you're exploring through, you're laying out the tiles. Yeah. Right? So you are basically you've created a giant robot. Oh, the lore on this thing is the insane. giant robot has become sentient and evil. Do you want me to explain the whole lore? Yeah, you go okay. ahead. So, you... so here's the actual lore for this game. It's it's bananas. I, I've read it. It's that's not really on the back of the box. It's on their website, but I will put it up. Um, humanity created a robot and then taught it to create its own organic pieces and then gave it sentience. So, of course, it just starts, like, doing whatever it wants to and building itself. There are civilizations of people living inside of this thing now that have never not lived outside of the robot <laughs> that only know that existence of inside of the mechanical beast. And your job is to go through and you can't convince the people to leave unless you collapse the robot and then chase them out like a sheepdog. That's the only, because otherwise they don't know that there's a sky and they refuse to abandon their religious zealot ways living inside of this giant That's the lore monster. of the game? That's the, it's in the rule book. That's the pretty, lore for this it's pretty, game. It's pretty funny. So as you're moving through the thing, you're making note of where the survivors are as you find them. Because when you activate that final thing, the tiles actually start physically compacting and shifting. Yeah, yeah. And then you run back. So like and you, chase you people. as the game starts, you grow the maze, right? Because yes. you're flipping out the tiles. That's where yep. the betrayal thing comes. You're laying out the tiles. You find the off switch. You turn the off switch, and then it starts collapsing. And then you have to escape before you it collapses in around you. Yep. So like, there's two games. There's exploration, and then there's the fleeing. And there's the uh, <laughs> there's also the screw your friend over part of it. Because yep. if you see that your friend is making their way in a different path, there's switch tiles that will come out. When you hit one of those, based on the other tiles adjacent to it, you can move rooms, switch hallways. It's very much the uh, the Harry Potter thing where it's always constantly like shifting nice. like that. So you can do that. And I mean, this has been a while for a while. Actually, like this says 2020. So I think this was maybe launched in 2020, was it? And then I signed in 2021. No, because I was signed it before the Kickstarter launched. So maybe I launched it in 2020. I signed this. It could be. It was before November be 2020. That's all I know. Because that's oh, so it's been up. a while. It has been. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long time coming. And it's a, it's a really cool looking game. But I yeah, the, qual the quality, rounds. like you'll see on the website, it's on. We're going to start fulfilling the Kickstarter copies now. Right, Kickstarter already... retailers. Well, they fulfilled, fulfilled. Their, they fulfilled their own Kickstarter copies, but we have the retailer copies we have yeah. to fulfill. And then I think it is over at Gigabytes already because you know it the is. perks of making the game is I like, get the copies first. No, oh, that's that sticker. But like, look I mean, familiar. the quality of like this, like little standy thing and everything, I wasn't even aware how quite. Oh, it's really cool. It yeah, definitely so. check out the pictures online uh, to see the quality of this stuff, or go actually play with the demo copy at Gigabytes too, because it's a real quick, easy setup to learn the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've really liked the potential of just the. It's just going to get real grognardy for a second. But the way that they have where the... Um, oh, and the, the camera doesn't even want to do it. The way they have the where the turn thing is yeah. and basically where that is, judging on how you're going to manipulate the whole map or collapse one area, not the other area, there's a lot of, like, interesting... It's going to come back on in a second. There's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with the map manipulation on top of, like, actually trying to play the game, too. It's pretty cool. It looks neat. But, yes. Mechanical Beast, available now, twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, I did have a price increase, sadly, because, uh, you know, 
we live in 2022 and it, inflation's a thing and so is shipping and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, $30 game, but it's well worth it. It comes with so many meeples so and, uh, like, the contents of the box, you can't see them because they're off-screen so that we yeah. didn't dump the box out. But there's a lot of stuff yeah. in there, too. It's worth it. It's worth it. And we're not just saying that because the logo's behind us. That'd be worth it. Oh, yeah. But, oh, hey, yeah. we'll have this at PAX Unplugged now, too. So we that'd will. Be great. We will be at PAX Unplugged. Uh, we'll we'll be at booth now. Oh. Now, we'll be at booth 3155 at PAX Unplugged. Do you see where I put the booth number? So I can oh, always, yeah, so we can always on camera, I always know where that booth I just thought that was the pin code for like, your credit card or something. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, well, now I got to go change that. So, <laughs> so the arrival of this does lead me to some interest to know because actually I had a... Coincidentally, I didn't know this was arriving yesterday, right? Uh, <laughs> no one did. So funny story. We didn't book the freight, right? We never booked it. We got CC'd on an email and our, our compass, uh, our, our freight rep was booked and he just went ahead and booked it, which I, I'm fine with. I mean, I really appreciate him taking that yeah. initiative and getting it to us. But myself and Matt were like, who, who booked this? Why has this arrived? We had no idea. And our warehouse staff were yelling at us and, you know. But I hear it. So it arrived. No, hear them now. But coincidentally, I had an email this morning from, from a retailer. It was like, I feel like you've forgotten us. This is outrageous. Yada, yada, yada. Where is it gone? And it does lead me to my rant for the week. Here it is. It's Put the title screen Timelines. What? The... We don't have a title oh, screen. Oh, okay. Jeez, I really hope we are next week. Next week we will have a title screen. Timelines. Timelines on fulfillment. People are so unrealistic on how long it takes for stuff to ship. Uh, I've, I've, because Bridge has a lot of fulfillment, right? We really, we really promote, and um, and I think we get we're pretty good at, it, right? Accuracy, I hope so. Quality of shipping, we're not the, we have not been historically the fastest shipper, right? But because we're not the fastest, or we are not the fastest because we take great care, and because yeah. of that, or like, for for people who may not be in the know, the average damage rate on a box, the acceptable damage rate. Is between five and seven percent, right? Insane. Depending on the company, the freight company you work with, right? So I think it's like, uh, I think UPS is like seven percent, and like FedEx is like five. FedEx, hey, no way, FedEx is making really five percent damage rate, right? Sorry, <laughs> uh, we're at like one point two five, I think it is now, mm -hmm. right? It was at one point five, and actually our last Kickstarter dropped that down. A one point five damage rate means it's that like insane. in a Kickstarter That's of good. like uh, three thousand units, we had thirty five issues with. I, I say damage rate, but it's like 35 inches of tracking or damaged boxes arriving. 35 items, right? It's very, very small. And I, and I feel horrible even to have 35, right? I want right. zero, but it's impossible to have zero because you're dealing with freight companies, you know, pass it off. FedEx, UPS, right. USPS, and someone's, they're kicking a box down the aisle. and We package it as nicely as we can, and then sometimes I watch somebody just yeet it in the but back But you know, I, like anyone who follows my Facebook, right? I got very frustrated about this week. I did have a Kickstarter arrive this week. And I was missing 16 out of 40 core sets, right? That's a substantial trip. And I got annoyed about it. I complained. It's and half. I actually regret complaining. But last week, I received a Kickstarter. And I was Dog Park, Collector Edition. Five out of 12 were damaged. And they're not sellable damage, right? Just so bad because they had been the box had been accordioned. Yeah. Because it had been incorrectly packed. Which is something, you know, I'm just I mean, looking at going, if any of my staff packed this box like this, I would be literally talking sternly because I don't yell. Yes, definitely when I hit them with a hammer. Definitely. <laughs> look, Wait a minute. Look, looking directly in. The... So like, it it is the expectation though, but because we have such a good and I I, I understand some people are like trying to get out, get out, get out, right? They're overwhelmed, they're locked. It's holiday season, uh, you know. But they're giving people an unrealistic expectation of when stuff would arrive. So you know, I've been reading a lot and asking me. We just finished uh, a couple of Kickstarters for a company called Ludus Magnus. When you actually read the comment section, it's vitriol, right? Uh, vitriol? 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 Yes. The vitriol. Directed. So you should sack your US fulfillment company slow, slow. But you know what I don't see on the thing? My stuff's damaged. How do I replace it? Yeah. No open box shots where it looks like a mangled. And mess nobody in there. appreciates that. Like, it's crazy. Like, people are like, well, I want my stuff fast. I want stuff fast. Person, like, well, you've forgotten about me. It's like, no, I haven't forgotten about you. It just literally has not arrived. It literally arrived yesterday, and we have to count it and find damages. And... Yeah. So, you know, it, it is something we want to ask and, and something we concentrate at Bridge is accuracy, you know. And we, we try to say it where a publisher's like, listen, yeah, you might be told by another company, hey, we'll get it in two weeks. They won't. And if, if they get close to that, it's going to be just shunt into a box. Whereas, you yeah. know, we want to make sure the package is correct, bubble wrapping or papering, whatever is correct, and, and that it's being handled safely. 
when we have a um, checked by card go in, it's actually being checked by the people who are signing. Yeah, I got the, this one. I did what re the reason I really went off on this one, right? And and I feel bad about it because I, I kind of did a few things wrong way when we went off. But it's the card said it was checked by four people, four different names on it. Yeah, I was missing sixteen items. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah. Well, each person took out four items. But how much of that is an unhealthy requirement where they're being pressured by backers and stuff who are like, I want my stuff last week. I've been waiting for this for two years, and it's Kickstarter. I'm sorry, you're gonna wait two yeah. years for a game to be ready now, right? That's um, that's kind of the concept to understand too, is because I think Kickstarter is not instant. When you make a Kickstarter purchase, you basically go, cool. In a couple of years or a year at best, this is gonna show up. And you're not expecting, cool, in one to two shipping days, it's going to be at my house. Yeah. And I think when people start seeing on social media, because sometimes influencers will get a copy before, or the company has made prints just for yeah. them. Well, so the, they see it out there and they get Well, the angry. big thing, especially with Ludus Magnus, and we had this happen with Stars of Karyos as well, people are following the ship, right? It's like, the ship hit port. Okay. Well, it must mean it's delivered next week. Uh, no, it's got to hit port. It's got to get discharged. It's got to pass customs. Yes. It's got to get room on the train. It's got to get the train to here. It's got to go to the yard. It's got to get in a bus or a truck. It's got to get on the truck. It's got to get to us. We've got to receive it. We've got to count it. We've got to pack it. We've got to ship it. Yep. And so, like, people and like... And the shipping time counts. And people are like, this arrived, like, late August. And, you know, it took a month and a half to do all of this, right? Because it's a big project. Yeah. Lots lot of, of touches, as we call it, touches. Uh, because lots of different pieces. Big boxes. And so it took a while, right? But... Yeah, uh, nobody's going to have damages. <laughs> Very fall, few amount of people. Uh, stuff goes wrong, you know. Something yeah. put the wrong label on, or something like pack I've, wrong, or I've seen people pack a really nice box and then watch somebody just eat it in the back of the FedEx truck, and I'm like, ah, oh, well, yeah, not us, not, not us. We don't not us. No, no, I'm watching. I'm talking person. about once it gets handed to uh, you. <laughs> uh, uh, no. But all we ask is like people be realistic in the result. Like, yeah, just because a ship has arrived doesn't mean you're getting it next week, right? You could still not get it for a month or two right yeah because things happen uh we have one right now that's been sitting in customs uh, i think actually it's just arrived today right that container and that had been oh. that, that was supposed to arrive uh february september 21st oh yeah so that's almost a month late mm -hmm. and you know we can't fulfill certain orders because the product on that hasn't arrived and it's a month later but people are like well it was important february september 21st like yeah that's cool yeah <laughs> Feel free to drive up and ask them for your copy. Means nothing to me. <laughs> they probably won't let uh, you. That's a, that's another thing about Kickstarters that uh, I don't think people maybe realize that don't work on the back end is when you've got a Kickstarter that has the game and the plushie and the deluxe thing. Those might not come in the same shipment. Yep. So a yep. lot of well, times, you look at Final Girl, right? Amazing. And and I had a customer who bought one yesterday, and he said, "Oh, I really hope to get the Void because it's it mentions it on the back, I guess." Yeah. Or... yeah into the Void, which is the the Ripley one, mm -hmm. definitely not Aliens. Yep. And uh, but that's because that's a series Mostly. two, right? So that's going to arrive December. Well, series one I think was supposed to arrive in June. Yeah, or uh, July. Now it's October, so three month delay. No, maybe it was August. Then. Whatever it was three months ago, because I knew it was three month delay. I was assuming a three month delay in December. So you know, you never know when it's going to arrive. And just be patient with your store. Be patient with your fulfillment. Be patient with your publisher. Yeah. Patient with everybody. Patience. 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 You'll, get, you'll get your toys. The games are going. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if you're not a Kickstarter, you've waited. A year at yeah. least at that point yeah. i mean we're doing scp right now and we were silly in that we said a june 2022 release that was me i, I said I that. Like, I we can get that out <laughs> realist the realistic is it's going to be late it's already late right it's going to be 2023 yeah. uh, i don't feel good about that but it's going to be an amazing product it's going to be perfect i see what you guys are doing with it it's cooking uh, because it needed to be cooked more and yeah. i don't want to release something that doesn't look like a professional thing so that was when we went to the community and said, hey, it's going to take a longer time than we thought. We're going to need yep. more work, but this is good because it makes a better product after yep. all. And it's worth the wait. So, yeah, definitely just be realistic. I, like, I, I really it came to my mind this week and I was like, oh, man, I, I, I erupted about it, right? And I should have been more patient. Uh, but people need to be nicer. <laughs> well, you understand, as a retailer, you understand when you get a product and because that's your money. Yeah. People are sending you money that turns into yeah. income that pays your employees. But then you want to talk with, like even as a fulfillment house, right? Don't don't bow down to like I have to get out fast, so we're just gonna eat it into a box and get it out. Well, that's how I get five out of my twelve dog park games crushed and destroyed that right. I can't sell, right? And they don't. It's a collector edition, right? Like I didn't buy the standard that would be in retail. I bought the collectors because that's the Kickstarter, and I can't get more of that, mm -hmm. right? Well, luckily I think they're sending me a fixed boxes, but it's hard to get more of it, right? Like right. Look at that deluxe Flamecraft came out. Amazing game by Lucky Duck Games. Gone. 
And I'd be like, can I have more? Can I have more? And they're like, no, there's no more. That's it. No, 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 I'm making more. Flames out. Uh, <laughs> flames. We've done crafting to flames. <laughs> uh, so, you, you know, it has to be packaged better, right? Yeah. Good. Nobody wants to get their stuff with a little ding on the corner and then their, their, their collector item. Because, you know, a lot of them aren't going to touch it. If you're like me, you, you buy a collector edition and it goes on a shelf. And you look at it. And you look at it. And you uh, go, ah, that was a time I spent too much money. My stuff. Like if this one, this is this is our demo copy, right? Or yeah. I guess the open copy, and that's got a little dent on the side. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's a pretty know. marginal thing, but there was it was the top of the box, and it's because when it was mm-hmm. packaged, they just threw another box on top of but it. But they packaged like that because they were bound down and were worried about getting it out and getting it to us fast. And so patience yeah. is the Hated word. Key of the day. And patience. anyone who knows me knows I'm really impatient. <laughs> That's why we're going to just record this, and then anytime patience. you get impatient, we'll just play the clip of you going, Patience. Patience. And I just get that audio clip. I like it. I like it. Yeah. But yeah, you know, that's my rant. That's my little rambly rant. Rant. Yeah. Rant. Because I don't really have anything else bad happening. I've only had pretty good things. most For the most part, good things have happened this week. So it has been a good week. I'll say also, if you Work are. for Bridging Giga. If you're. Uh, well, that's good to you. If you're, <laughs> if you're uh, getting a Kickstarter also, and for instance, you happen to know the fulfillment company, but you have a problem with the game. The fulfillment company did not do that. Yeah, we can't. We're do sorry. That. I I, can't, I get some messages <laughs> under the Facebook where people are like, "Hey, my copies of blank didn't have blank inside the box." You guys are terrible. I'm sorry. Like we don't know that we didn't open your copy and hand check every piece. <laughs> yeah. Then you would have been mad. Yeah. So so just maybe understand that that's not the, the distribution company. Distribution company is not. We didn't make the game except for this one. Except for this one. So you can yell at us about this one. Feel free to yell at us about how yeah. great it is because it's really cool. This game is the best. It's really fun. We're gonna try this it. game. I mean. Yes. Try it. I've, I've, I have bought a lot of it because I believe it's good. A completely... But, but I also need to sell a lot of it. Completely <laughs> unbiased recommendation. <laughs> Definitely not from... Yeah, buy it. That's... Google Mike Games. Go- Google me. Google me. Google me Games. Right. I feel like we're whining at the end of the rambles now. Yeah, we're at the we're end. Just I, mean, I just have my rant. Like, I have my rant. <laughs> good. I'm going to go out there and someone's going to have me a coffee. And the day is going to start. I hope so. There's a dog in the office, too. Briefly. Briefly. We can maybe go Briefly. pet the dog again. We can pet the dog. Let's go see if we can pet the dog. It's not a poodle, so, I mean, uh, I'm a poodle guy. <laughs> You're welcome. I have two. <laughs> That's the second I sound have, clip I have now. I have two poodles. That's it. That's so. all I needed to get out of him yeah, today. You're was good. Relax, be patient, and I'm a poodle guy. I'm a poodle guy. So, uh, we'll see you all next time on the Rambles. Right. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye.